Okay guys, as you can see, we have some pretty inclement weather down here in Salt Lake City. When I was up in Park City this morning, it was dumping like six, seven inches overnight. So I was a little concerned about the van and trying to get it out of here, but I just kind of trusted that the lower elevation of Salt Lake, it would be raining and that's kind of exactly what it's doing. We have a super easy drive, basically just right down like the highway, about three hours and you land in Moab. So I'm really, really excited to go from this to then the desert. So I hope you guys are all enjoying your President's Day weekend or holiday or vacation. Uh, we're gonna rally down the van, gotta get some gas, I'll load up some food a little bit and then head down south to the desert. much for not driving in the snow it is just like a complete whiteout outside it's been raining the entire time and then as it slowly started going up this pass it's just completely socked in at least the roads are still pretty dry and there's not like a lot of snow on the road itself i've been wanting to get the drone up just to fly the drone but it's just like i said it's been just raining really heavily and now it's snowing so it's just not entirely worth it but as soon as i can i want to try to get the drone up in the air finally made it out here to Arches National Park in Moab. I'm literally just, just drove through the entrance of the park and I'm coming up here now. I am like really, really stoked because, well, hold on, let me back up. There's a ton of cloud cover. Like, I don't know if we're gonna get any sort of sunset. Definitely not gonna get any sort of like stargazing from what I can tell just with this amount of clouds. But the reason why I am stoked is because every time I'm usually here in the summer, it's like 100 degrees and that's all you get is sun, not a single cloud. I was trying to make a plan for the sunset, but I really just couldn't find anything other than like the delicate arch, which is like a super common place. I've been there before. So I might just do like some a scenic drive and try to see if I can find some red rocks somewhere and, and see what I can get myself into. <laughs> Okay, so before I go any further, I remember I had a map of arches here. Arches. Um, at this point, I think I might just go to a very basic Park Ave. It's about, it says here, it's about a mile hike, just like a short hill that leads through like the courthouse towers and some other stuff like that. It's basically right down here. I think that's my best bet just because again, there's like no people here. Like I don't think if you've never been to Arches, sometimes you can't even park. There's just that many people here. So because that's not the case, I can go to this super common place maybe and Maybe that'd be a good thing. I don't really know. Alright guys, we're out here at Park Ave. There's like 30 minutes of light left if you could even call it that because there really just is no light left. I'm gonna grab my bag and then we're gonna go for a hike through here and see what we can find. Park Ave Trail. We are here. Courthouse Towers. Check out this viewpoint from here. We can go all the way down, down those steps, down that trail to the courthouse. And I'm telling you, this is like so rare to just have like no freaking people here. It's nuts. Oh, man, I just got like a second wind after driving all day and just being surrounded by that. Look at how cool that is. I'm sorry, but I just absolutely love this stuff. I can never ever get enough of it. For those who know me, seeing light on like mountain peaks or light on anything is my favorite thing. And we have it right there. You can see on the top, the light is just hitting that. And it's just so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I just wanna like freaking cry. I mean. You guys hear those birds chirping? My God. If you guys have never been to Southern Utah, I like, I don't know what you're doing. If you can afford it, if you have the time to come out here, I highly, highly, highly recommend coming out here. I mean, look at this sandstone that I'm walking on. Look at that. I mean, just look at these views. Look at where I am. Uh, Are you a professor? Uh, whatever, man. I'll uh, take it, sure. You. Yeah. Wow, it's so beautiful right now, isn't it? Okay, ready? One, two. Wow. 
Thank you so much. Have a good Appreciate night. Everything. Yeah. See ya. It's just like, how can you not be in a good mood when you? Amazing. Right? Isn't it sick? Yes. So beautiful. Like everyone is just in a good mood because, oh God, I can't even, can't even deal with this right now. Okay. Look. Hello. Oh my God. I'm gonna like rig up a time lapse just because the clouds are moving and this photo, this view right here is just absolutely amazing. I can't even explain it to you guys how happy I am that I made the trip down here. And like, it just, it just reminds me that I love skiing like with my entire heart, but I also love doing this stuff. And I don't know what it is about it, but just being outside in, in this sort of beauty, I, I mean, I haven't stopped talking about it. I feel like this is gonna be like so much of me just saying how beautiful this is. I'm just feeling really grateful and really blessed. That's what nature does to me a lot of times. So, man, oh man. You can see there's really not any more light, but we're kind of entering that like blue hour stage, which is, in my opinion, just as fun to shoot, just as beautiful. So, because my mom didn't raise no quitter, I think I'm just gonna skirt to the end of this trail. When you're in a place like this, even just the slightest change of composition, the slightest change of angle, you know, uh, can just open up a whole different perspective, a whole different experience. So I'm just gonna continue walking towards this big thing. Carry on. It's amazing how fast the temperatures drop out here. We do have some cloud coverage, which will help kind of retain some of the heat tonight. I'm starting to trek back up to the car park where we started. It's so dark right now. Jeez. I think okay. these are our markers. Looks like this way. I was going the wrong way for a while. I was like going down this whole like other ravine. I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. I honestly forgot all my lights in the van because I was just so excited and I just knew we didn't have a lot of time with the, the sun, but not a smart thing. Don't do what I did. All right, made it back to the van. I moved up a little bit in the park I think now it's time for dinner. I'm super, super hungry. I think on the menu is some brats or brats. How do you say that? Brats, brats. I think I'm gonna make a little bit of some ramen noodle soup, so nice hot meal tonight. So let's get that going. One of my favorite features about this entire van and just the setup is really how versatile and multifunctional it is. I mean, I even have like, my own little dinner table here. Zoom this out so you guys can see it. Some top ramen here, roasted chicken flavor with two uh, two brats. I even toasted the bun in the grease that I cooked the brats in, so. Mm. Mm -mm. Wow cooked to perfection. I'm also charging my phone. No generator, car's not on, just right off the solar battery. I mean, what more do I really need? Let's hit the spot. Woo! Last bite. Uh. It's time to go back out into the park and see if I can hit up some astrophotography or something, just night photography of some sort. It might even look cool with the clouds. We don't have a complete new moon, which if you don't know what new moon is, that's basically when there is no moon. And that's ideal for shooting stars because then you have absolutely no moonlight so the stars really shine. We're actually in, I think, uh, like third moon or something like that, basically, uh, where it's about half moon, a little less than that. So not the worst conditions. Definitely there will be a window now and then before the sun comes up where shooting stars will work. However, it won't be like, ah, as uh as it could be out here but when you're out here these guys are so dark i'm talking way too much let's just go find some stars to shoot or something
the astrophotography didn't really work out as I had intended or planned to. I figured I uh, might as well kind of mess around with these lights that I got that you guys saw in the last vlog and see if I can kind of hang them up around here. I got the lights strung up. They're gonna need some fine tuning, but I think for the most part, they're pretty good. They're plugged in right now. I'm gonna shut off this light back here. Ready, one, two, three. I am gonna call it for the night I'm in my camp and tomorrow I'm planning on getting up for the sunrise to go check out the double arch in the window section. Without saying any more, I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. I just woke up to a check of my time lapse that I set out up there and a bunch of stars came out so I was gonna pull my time lapse down but I put another battery in see if we can capture some of the stars but going back to bed actually surprisingly very very warm and it shows that it's about 28 degrees out not bad <sighs> This time I finally made it to the double arch trail and I think I can kind of see it out there in the distance. One other car that showed up this morning to head out here, which again is just like absolutely super, super rare. Still got a good amount of cloud coverage like we've had this whole little mini trip. So I'm not sure how much light we're gonna get, but it's all the fun of it. Literally right over my head, is a double arch. You can see there's two arches, thus why it's called the double arch. As I get closer and closer to it, it just keeps getting more massive. Check this out. One arch, two arches. <gasps> Look at how big that is. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how I can show you guys this like in a fair way. This way? <laughs> just crazy. <laughs> up here on the very tippy top of the double arch. Check this out, check the view up behind me. That's basically the entire arch and then the rest of the window section. And it's just so insane to be up here with like literally no people. There's one other couple here from San Diego. It's really so massive. Like you don't get a sense of the scale when you see it from far away or pictures, but as soon as you get up into a place like this, you just get like immersed into like these rock features and it just makes you feel so incredibly small. Uh, it's pretty amazing just being able to hang out here have some morning coffee and just start your day this way rather than anything else in my opinion. the only one up here in the double arch and I just like can't get over again the scale of this I'm on this other side of this system here check out this drop that I'm like just standing on or the spine Whoa. by the way those two people I met from San Diego were super rad the guy had a theory that one out of every three people are dickhead and he said that I was not one of those people so that's good <laughs> What an absolutely incredible weekend trip here in the desert. Like I need to do this again, like next weekend or sometime soon before all the crowds get here. So I'm gonna make some breakfast, kind of get cleaned up, get the van cleaned up and start to head back up north because I need to work tomorrow. So thank you guys so very, very, very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy, peace.
I always fail on that. How do I do this? I think that's better. See ya.